Hello and welcome to Legends of Eisenwald, a game that is currently in early access slash early beta. It is beta version 0.905. This game is a strategy slash RPG game. It uh, uses a turn-based system for combat. It is a lot of fun. Uh, at first glance, for me personally, it resembles something like King's Bounty, I guess, to a certain extent, just the way you move over the uh, world map. And, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of King's Bounty, or maybe even uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, and uh, possibly other games that I'm forgetting to mention right now. But it is still unique in its own way, and is, I have to say, a lot of fun to play, and definitely worth picking up. Um, I mean, if you're not into the whole early access thing, that's fine, you can wait, you know, for it to fully release, but at the price it is right now, $15, when the game does release, and you like these types of games, I strongly suggest that you pick it up because it is a lot of fun. So what we are going to do is load, actually no, we're going to start a new game. We're going to go ahead and do the uh, main campaign, which is kind of like the tutorial campaign. I've uh, gone through it and it was a lot of fun. And uh, away we go. Uh, you get to choose three different characters as your main hero. I don't know if this is going to change when the game fully releases or if this is pretty much the only choices you have, which is fine. It's just basically, you got the, the knight, the baroness is like a range character, and then you got the mystic. I have not used the baroness or the mystic yet. I am tempted in the mystic. I do like to play magey type characters, and I'd like to see how strong uh, this character can be uh, as a hero, because the knight was pretty strong, so let's see how the mystic plays out. And we'll go ahead and start the uh, game. The loading's actually pretty quick. I'm going to skip through the dialogue. It just tells you what's going on and whatnot. And um, I've disabled the tutorial pop-ups. I'll just tr I'll try to remember exactly all the important things to mention about this game. Uh, first thing first is that you can fully rotate the uh, the map, as you can see. Zoom in and out. And see, as you walk, well, actually, this is not the right time to show you because there's a lot of early dialogue here. So we met uh, this guy here, uh, Berthold. He's, uh, I guess, our best friend or something, or assistant, or I don't know what you want to call him. He actually joins us. And uh, let's talk to this guy, too, who will join us as well. He's a hunter. Good day to you, travelers. Yes, yes. Come and join us. And then there's some dialogue for it. All right, so he has joined us, and now there's someone else here, actually, that's going to bring us straight to combat. So I guess we'll do combat before I show you exactly how the world map works. I mean, I call this the world map. I, I guess it could be considered something else, but I call it the world map. Um, so yeah, this guy, the, uh, for some reason, doesn't like us, and since this is the tutorial uh, campaign, I guess it, it throws you in combat right away just to show you how it works. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> and as you can see, fully rotatable as well. And I have to say that the visuals are very nice, actually. For a for an indie developer to uh, do this uh, type of work, actually, is very, very, uh, very good, actually. I, I really do like the art style. And uh, yet, you can fully rotate the combat, zoom in and out as well. So how combat works is very simple. As you can see, our heroes back here. You got you got three different uh, lines, I guess, if you will. You got the people completely in the back, which is usually where you keep your priests and your mages and the whatnots. Actually, I don't think there's any mages, but uh, you got your healers and your priests. Then the second row is usually where you keep your range characters, and in the front line you keep your your tougher melee characters. So let's see how this combat works out. As you can see up here, we have some spells. This is meditation. If you if you do this, it, you skip a turn, but you restore 10 uh, spiritual power, which is the MP of the game, the blue bar here, actually. And um, what else? Uh, you got this. Actually, this is not bad. This is a fireball spell, so there is mages in the game. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm already already quite happy that I took the, uh, the mystic. This does 34 damage to an enemy unit. May only target a unit in a neighboring hex. Hmm. A neighboring hex. That means I have to get really up close for this. And this one, uh, Transmutatio <laughs> Ferrum. Uh, the melee defense of a friendly unit becomes 14, replaces current defense of a character, and, la uh, and lasts three turns. If you right click, whoops, it didn't work. If you right click, you can see, the problem is you have to hold it. I wish it would actually just permanently stay there. You'll see what the stats are. And you got your uh, melee defense, you got your range defense, attack, initiative, uh, willpower. Willpower is actually pretty strong, determines how much uh, the cost of enemy spells is increased, uh, blah blah blah. Good for a mage, you got your health, your experience, 
This is what he's currently wearing, but I'll go through that after. And these are the skills and the type of weapons he's allowed to use. So right now, um, right now he's got defense of 12. So if I were to use this on him, it would become 14. Melee defense would become 14 instead of 12, which I guess is good. But I would like to move, but I can't move for some reason. No, it won't let me move, because the way the, the game mechanics works is that you have to target a character to move to him. You can't just move, you know, on what, whichever hex you want. Which makes me wonder how the hell am I going to be using this. I guess I have to wait for an enemy to get really close to me. So anyways, what we'll do is we'll use this spell here on our guy here, and as you can see there's a buff. There's no way of knowing what the buff is, though. I, I would like there to be, like, if I hover on this arrow that'll show me exactly what's going on, but it doesn't do it. So this guy can target either of these ones. So we're going to go straight. I'm going to actually move here because I'd like to be on this hex. And we'll do an attack on him, which should do 29 damage. And there you go. He's wounded and he's uh, he's taking damage. Now we got our archer. Same thing. We'll, uh, we'll focus on uh, enemies here just to make things a bit easier. We might lose the... Uh, might lose the archer because when I played the game as a as a knight, oh actually he he got a counter attack here that was pretty good. When I played as the knight, uh, having two melee guys early on was very very strong. But uh, yeah, I wonder why I can't use this. I'd have to move and I can't move. I really really have to wait for someone to get really up close to me, I guess, to be able to use it. Uh, so what we will do now is use the armor again on this guy here. Whoops. On this guy here, he's got hardly any armor, so actually this is going to be pretty good to use on him. Right now his armor is 13, so much better than before. And this guy is going to make an attack here. The archer... See, the archer has no choice but to engage this guy here, because he's right next to him. It's, it's a strange mechanic, but it works uh, to make combat quite challenging. And nope, we didn't lose the uh, our our archer here. Actually, he's a hunter because they do level up. Every uh, character levels up. And uh, yeah, so now still can't use. Whoops, I, I'm still getting used to the uh, the camera. It's very uh, very fragile, I guess, if you will. Uh, I guess now um, I I really don't know what to do. I guess I'll just meditate. This guy should be able to finish this guy off. Now the archer has no choice but to engage this guy again. And we lost our hunter, but that's fine. I'm actually going to use... I'm actually going to wait. Skip down, and I'm going to wait a turn. See, this guy has no choice but to attack the other melee guy. You can't go after archers until all the melee guys are done with, which is uh, a bit odd, because I would like to get rid of this archer. So we'll go ahead and finish that guy off. And, uh, well, I guess we might as well beef up his uh, armor again. Is it still my turn? It's still my turn. I guess just wait and do whatever. We'll go ahead and make an attack here. I probably shouldn't have taken the mystique. It's probably not the right character to, to, to show how the game works. Because even I'm not exactly sure how the uh, mystic uh, works completely. We'll go ahead and just wait, I guess. Go ahead and do another attack, and that's it for combat. Now, our guy does not die. He gets wounded. He gets, a, I think it's called a uh, a grave something, a grave wound or something. It doesn't mean he dies, but if he gets three of them, then he's permanently dead and he's gone. So what we have to do is actually go heal him up now. Uh, so there we go. We got 40 gold, and there we go. So back to the world map. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's actually a, a better way of seeing the whole map. You got the map here, and then you can click on different things here to to show different uh, graphs on the uh, on the world map. This is the quests. This is uh, what is this? Show coats of arms. Okay, it probably shows you the. See, this is our faction, and then you got this other faction, which we'll end up going to war with which is part of the campaign, then you could show the armies as well, which is always always good to know. In fact, we'll remove the uh, the coats. I'd rather just see where the armies are. 
Actually, that's not true. I'd like to know. I'd like to know who's who. So yeah, we'll do it like this. And yeah, you got the castles. Uh, show descriptions, and then it shows you the names of the stuff, but it, it starts cluttering things a bit too much, so we'll leave it like this. And here you got your journal. As you can see, our quest is to go to the uh, Sedlitz Castle, which we are going to do now. But this is a quick look at the overview of the uh, journal and map. Very simple. It gets the job done, so it's all good. So yeah, back to the uh, world map. As you can see, when you walk, time is going here. It's progressing. And uh, so it's not really action points like I, like I guess like in King's Bounty, but certain quests I think require like there's a time limit I guess to when it has to get done. So you gotta kind of strategically figure out how you want to do things. But uh, I don't think we'll be seeing any of this in this particular campaign. You can also move the uh, or not move but increase the speed as to how quickly they walk on the map which uh, I kind of like 2. 2 is a pretty good pace, it gets us around. Oh, I accidentally clicked in here. This is actually a shop, but it's not unlocked yet. So what we're going to do is just go straight to the castle. This guy is saying hello to us as well. We'll go straight to our castle here. And uh, yeah, talk to, uh, I think it's our father if I'm not mistaken. Okay. He was just pointing out that we're getting close to the uh, castle. There we go, blah blah blah. He's just going to give us a quest right now. Troubling news indeed. So there we go. Now we're in here. This is where you recruit uh, specific uh, units. There's two types of units. There's the, I guess the faction units. They call them fighters. They actually take up a slot right here. Whoops, I can't actually see. But right here you see this portrait, one of five. The one is actually us right now and we can equip another four people to our party. These two guys here are in our party, but they're like volunteers, so they don't actually take up a slot. Uh, you can hire mercenaries as well, which take up a slot <coughs> in your uh, army, but the the downside is is that they cost money per uh, per day, a certain amount of uh, maintenance fee, if you will, or a pay. And um, I'm not quite sure where it shows you how much money you're earning per day. Right now, we're plus zero per day, but... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. This is how many castles right here, how many castles we uh, own. This little castle, little icon here. It's, I don't know if this, if you can see the, my my cursor right now, but uh, right here. This actually will increase the amount of uh, units you can have in your army, so that's pretty good. Then you got the basic stuff here. These are our characters and the items we have. We don't have any items right now, but you can go through the different ones. And there's no, like, uh, show all items. It's either, you know, check your inventory for weapons, armors, uh, different uh, miscellaneous uh, uh, objects, I guess, if you will, and uh, or accessories, actually, is the word I'm looking for. Then you got some potions. Then you got trophies and treasures here. I'm not quite sure what they do, but they do tend to be worth money, so I guess you trade uh, trade stuff for them. And these are your mounts, but uh, I don't think we get a mount anytime soon. I can't remember, actually. <clears throat> actually, I did play through this whole campaign and I don't recall them out but I might I might have missed something because I was playing quite quickly so <clears throat> we'll try to do a better job at uh, finding everything so right now I'm actually forgetting what the quest is so we'll go see what the main quest is and uh, go to St. Elena's Church okay so that's what we'll do St. Elena's Church is right here and we'll go straight to the church eventually there we go and what we're going to do here is actually hire... Oh, actually, no, we're going to heal ourselves. And this is where you heal uh, your wounds, and this guy will be fully healed after this. It's going to cost us 80 gold, though. So, obviously, <clears throat> minimizing your damage in combat is definitely worth something, because to keep your units healed, it's going to cost you money. And uh, the more XP they get, the stronger they get, obviously. And if they do permanently die... That ain't good either. So you want to make sure that after each combat, you got them healed to make sure that everything's going good. But this is just basic uh, RPG stuff. I'm sure everybody knows about this. It's uh, But uh, it works quite well. Um, okay, so now we're to, actually. We've done the church thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. He wants us to come all the way back. So we have to go to the church to heal. It's a little bit of, uh, you know, fetch and uh, quest and fetch or fetch and quest or whatever the hell you want to call it. We'll go back to the... Uh, castle and talk to our father again. At least I think it's our dad. I'm not sure. His name is uh, Siedlitz. 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 
And there we go. So now we get to hire someone. All right, so we'll, we will hire him. Have an extra guy up front will be very useful. We could hire another one if we wanted to, but uh, actually it won't let us. But anyways, I'm pretty sure you can because we do have the money for it. But uh, So there you go. We got another uh, guy in the front lines. This guy is a melee guy. Now he's telling us to go get a priest and get a healer. So that's what we're going to do. we got to actually go back to the church for the priest. Actually, we can go here probably now and buy, yeah, buy our gear. So what we'll do is actually click on our guy here. Or no, our guy's back here. That's true. He's not wearing anything, so... Would it show it on the screen? Oh, I don't think it does. So what we'll do is we'll buy this because it gives us an extra plus five uh, mana, I guess this is. Is it willpower or mana? I'm not sure, but it's definitely what we want right now. So we'll buy one. We'll keep it like that. And there we go. We're all happy. Everything's good. That's fine. We'll go here and equip it. And as you can see right now, these are the stuff I have equipped right now. Uh, it doesn't really give you a description, but these are permanently on you all the time. So what you want to do is just replace this for something better. And uh, yeah, you have to kind of be careful because uh, right now if I put this here, as you can see, now instead of a instead of a scroll which does what sorcery book lowers the spiritual power cost of spells by 20%. So if I kept the spell book, my spells would be 20% cheaper. <clears throat> If I put this on, what do I get instead? Increase the power of spells by 20%. So actually, that makes more sense. My spells will be 20% stronger versus the scroll. They don't both take effect. Basically, the weapon you have equipped takes effect. So if you wanted the spell, you'd have to unequip the uh, weapon right here. But this also gives us one initiative. So that's actually pretty good as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for the equipping. For now, we will get into combat and get more loot as we go along. Let's go hire the uh, priest. I think the priest now, right? Yeah, the priest. So hire the priest. What the priest does is he basically buffs people. He's kind of like the support buff type of guy. And uh, yeah, works. he works quite well. I'm going to go here to the forest village. Oh, there is a day and night cycle. As you can see, we are almost 9 o'clock and uh, it's getting dark out. So now we will hire the healer. So now our back row's full. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good uh, combination right now. We probably do want maybe another uh, archer in there at some point. Your grace, if you have it, blah, blah, okay, yes. They're just telling us that she's there to heal. And we know this because we've played RPGs before, I would hope. <laughs> and uh, find out the tavern where the blah, blah, blah is hiding. So what we will do is go to the tavern, which is right here. The place is crowded and rowdy. Da, da, da. <clears throat> so basically how this works is that you got rumors and then you click on it. And then you got a whole bunch of different things that you can listen to. And these will give you quests and allow you to progress with the main quests. And it's fun to read. I've, I've read them all. It was pretty good. And... Uh, now it's gonna, if you had the tutorial on it, tell you that, oh, you didn't find what you were looking for, so now, you know, try again. And uh, it's an interesting system. I think it could be polished a bit better than that, though, because it is kind of annoying having to re-click all the time. I think this is the one where we found uh, something. Oh, and this guy here will uh, give us a side quest. We'll give him the money. And, uh, yeah, he'll give us a side quest. This guy here... Go right ahead, yes, and I think that's it. Yeah, it stays there even though there's nothing else to talk about. So now we've unlocked pretty much every single quest. Let's go take a look. So the main quest is is hiding in the forest. So we got to go to the forest and kill off uh, this guy. There's also this quest here where I, call me stupid, but I can't for the life of me find this. I mean, it says the watchtower to the north, or the, uh, of the watchtower on the north bank. The north bank, I mean... I'm not quite sure where the North Bank would be. I mean, up here? I went up here. There wasn't anything to go find. Um, I mean, I guess this can be considered the North Bank. Maybe here, too. Anyways, I, I couldn't find this uh, treasure, actually. The additionals are basically your side quests here. And we do have a few side quests. Uh, although I think this one's completed, but it's not saying completed. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Future over there is Enter the Crypt. Oh, yeah, there's the 
crypt quest that actually we should go do right away. It's a very uh, fast quest that doesn't take very long. But yeah, I really do like the world map. It's very nice. I really do enjoy walking on it. I do suggest increasing the speed, though. I'm not sure why anybody would want to be moving very slowly, because it makes things quite tedious, actually. But when uh, at 2, I find it's a pretty good pace, where you get to observe and bask in the loveliness of the game as well. So we'll activate the quest here. Yes, we will enter the crypt. And uh, blah, blah, blah. It turns out it's just a, a beggar that's... Uh, that's uh, see, I had chosen attack, and we will attack, and this is what we received. It's just a beggar playing a prank on people, pretty much, just to try to get some cash. And there we go, it's done. So what we will do is go to our inventory, and as you can see in our uh, accessories here, we got this rabbit foot that gives us plus one uh, defense to melee and plus one defense to range. We'll go ahead and equip it on this guy here, actually, because he's kind of like our leader up front right now. And as you can see, it changes the stats. Put it on, take it off, put it on. As you can see, it goes plus one, plus one. And there we go. Now let's go to the... Actually, we got to find the guy in the forest. Now, the guy in the forest is right here. As you can see, there's a little, uh, a little sigil there. Except navigating in this forest is a real pain in the ass, though. Because you can't walk everywhere. You're not allowed to go absolutely everywhere. I think up... Oh, there he is. Okay, so we will encounter him up here. And there we go. Now, this fight might actually be relatively difficult because I did this with a... with a... Um, with, with a strong hero that was a melee guy, so our hero's pretty crappy actually. I'm trying to find a good angle here, Jesus. It's a, it's a nice, uh, there we go. I think this will be the sweet spot here. Okay, so, yeah, our hero's not all that great. So our priest goes first, he's probably got a very high initiative, actually, if we right click on him, we'll see that his initiative is 10, and our main guy is 6, this guy's 5, so he's got a very high initiative. What we will do is use the... Let's go defense first. So we'll go the Shield of Faith. And we'll do it on our uh, on our main guy here. Well, main guy. On our uh, stronger melee guy. And now it's our turn. Our turn, we still can't really do anything. So what we will do is... Uh, hang on. His, his defense is 16. So we, this actually won't do anything. The melee defense friendly units becomes 16 replaces current defense of the character. Actually, we'll use it on this guy here. I wonder if I have the staff, can I do attacks with my spell? I don't know. Okay, so who is the strongest guy here? Oops, it's hard to navigate here. Yeah, this guy's got an axe. This guy's actually the strongest guy, it looks like. He's got a shield. So I, I think focusing on him right now. Actually, what's his attack? His attack is 29. This guy's attack is 25. 25. Maybe we should just get rid of the easier guys first. So let's do that. Uh, our range guy is going to get an attack in. Good. This is the, uh, the initiative bar, I guess. Who's going to start first in combat and so forth. Now it's this guy's turn to attack. I know the combat doesn't look like much, but when you actually play the game for a couple of hours, you really start to understand why it, it works and why it's a lot of fun. There's a, there is a lot of strategy to it. It just doesn't seem like it right now because these fights are uh, very uh, basic fights. But uh, Okay, we got the healer now, and the healer will go ahead and heal this guy here. Okay, the priest turn. Uh, let's do stronger attack on this guy. And now it's our turn again. Can we do this? No. Ignis Magnesium inflicts 30. That's a lot of damage. Must only target unit in neighboring hex. But I can't move on the map, though. That's freaking weird. How am I ever going to get to use this? I mean, someone's got a breach. 
I mean, it's, it's a bad situation if the melee guy actually gets to there, but that's probably why it's so strong. 37 damage is crazy, so that's probably why. So I guess the Mystic starts off as kind of like a support guy. Not all that interesting, actually. It was a, maybe a bit more fun playing as the warrior. Maybe the, the Baroness actually might have been a better choice, but we'll see what other stuff we can unlock later on. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, beef up this guy's armor. Whoops. I can't... I can't target this guy. I guess he's too far. Um, actually, I might as well just do it on myself. Okay, let's attack this guy here. It's the ranger's turn. The ranger actually can't hit this guy for some reason. Interesting. So let's hit this guy. This guy can move yeah, in here. He doesn't really have a choice. I'm not quite sure exactly how it works, where I can move and where I can't move. But, uh, I mean, the game does tell you, like, okay, these are your options. Choose one. I know that once you're engaged, though, once you've actually started attacking someone, you cannot target someone else, so you have to finish them off. So these our two melee guys here are pretty much stuck to fighting this guy until this guy falls. Uh, Mage will heal uh, this guy again. Our priest can go ahead and... Actually, he's going to do some meditation to get some mana back. It's our turn again. Well, we can't really do anything again, so... I guess I will... Is this guy... This guy's 14. Yeah, let's do our armor thing on this guy here. I can't target him. Crap. Uh, let's do it on the archer. Okay. Actually, no, I don't have to be locked to this guy. Unless I didn't swing at this guy yet. Anyways, let's finish this guy off. Uh, yeah, fire at this guy. There we go. That guy's taken care of. And we got the mage again. What is the mage going to do? She's actually out of mana, so we're going to meditate. And it's the priest's turn. Actually, uh, increasing defense right now would be good on this guy. We don't want him to fall. Doopy doo. It's our turn. We'll meditate. Melee guy. Go ahead and attack this guy. Ranger guy can attack this guy. It's hard to see right now because it's dark. It is uh, it is nighttime. But hopefully on the video it, it'll still be clear enough to not look too uh, too dark on the video. Um, yeah, this guy's turn. Let's go ahead and take a swing. That should finish him off. Beautiful. We got the mage's turn again. Let's heal this guy because he's definitely needs some healing. Now the priest... Uh, just meditate. This fight's pretty much over now. Same thing with us. We'll just meditate. Let's go after the healer. We wounded her. And the archer should probably finish him off. No, not even. Go ahead. And now she's finished. This guy might actually run away now, so the combat might be over. Actually, it's not. Go ahead and meditate. You can meditate. Meditate as well. Go for the attack. Um, I am playing on normal difficulty. There's, I think, four difficulties. Easy, normal, hard, and something else. Or the, it might be three. I can't remember. But I'm playing on normal right now. It defaults on easy, but uh, easy is a bit too easy. And there we go. This is our experience. This is the loot we got, which is a good amount of loot. Go ahead and take everything. There we go, we finished the uh, the main quest, or part of the main quest. What's this? Why can't I uh, get out of there? See, it's very annoying to, <laughs> to travel through here. <clears throat> I think the, they're going to have to fix that because a lot of times you're clicking places and nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and just check our inventory real quick. And this is what we got. So let's go on the archer. We'll equip him this bow. Which right now, he's got a bow, but I think this one's slightly better. So if we equip it, 
yeah, as you can see, we now get uh, 14 attack and 2 extra initiative, which is great. And these bows will actually not do anything because we already have bows. Like, well, actually, no, it will give us an extra plus 1. Why does it give us plus 1? Oh, plus 2. Okay, yeah, these bows are probably just plus 1. These give us an extra plus 2 uh, attack, so we're at plus 15. So we're 15 times 2. So already slightly stronger. This is the uh, the armor we just got. Um, what does this guy have? This guy's actually wearing this already, the padded jacket. But I think the leather brigandine will be uh, stronger, I think. Yeah, he, it increases his uh, melee defense and range defense. The thing is that this is what he's permanently got on. And if you're not careful, sometimes you'll put something on that's not actually better. And your stats will go down, so it's... It's always good to make sure that it's working. I wish there was a better way, but uh, this way is not too bad. You just put it on, take it off, and then you could quickly just look and see, oh, okay, it's working. Uh, padded jacket, though, this guy has something way better than the padded jacket, so here we go. See, this is supposed to give us three defense to melee, but if I put it on, as you can see, my stats actually go down because this thing here is actually better, which looks like a plated uh, armor. Um, who else can I give this to? I guess I could give it to our guy. Does this screw us in it? Oh, I can't actually wear it. No. I don't think any of these guys can actually wear these. No, it's locked, so we'll probably just trade it or wait till we get someone else. Uh, there we got a charmed ring that we'll give to our main warrior for an extra two health. And a bear claw, which actually plus one two melee damage. There we go. No potions, no mounts, no nothing. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's the beginning part of this game. Uh, I think I will put a cut in this video and uh, continue on on another video. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you all next time.